And I was just thinking that like this is like what I was waiting for the whole production, you know? Liam Crowley with comicbook.com with the trio behind Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Guys, I can't believe we're here. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank, Thank you, you for having you. us. Being Absolutely. Here. So I want to start out by asking the biggest question of them all. What's your favorite piece of blue food? Leo, we'll start with you. Oh, of blue food. Does it have to be natural? <laughs> it, it, it can be food coloring. We see it in the show. Uh, yeah. Um. Blue dye 20. <laughs> I feel like that sour punch candy. It's a good one. Oh, you said, oh, you said food. Food, Sorry. food, candy, drink, <laughs> beverage. It can be anything. I got too many, man. Too many, Walker. <laughs> um, either like blue Gatorade or my mom made pretty good blue pancakes one time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, those blue like sugar cookies with the frosting on them. Those mm -hmm. are really good. Oh, like the blue and yellow ones. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, so good. The store yeah. ones. Yes. They're yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh my hit. god. <laughs> they will always be in the household. Leah, I want to start with you for our first solo question. Mm -hmm. Annabeth's Yankees cap is her direct connection to Athena. What was that one thing on set? It doesn't have to be physical. It could be a line of dialogue that gave you your strongest connection to this project. Um, I feel like, man, it was a lot. Um, one of them where it was like a proud moment was when we were at the top of that mountain. And it was, um, it was like a really quick, uh, like word that I said when I took it out, but, um, it was at the top of the mountain of, um, uh, capture the flag. Sorry. <laughs> and, um, that's when I was telling Percy, I was like, I was like, you know, like, Okay, bye. Then I took the hat on and I did like this. And he was so confused and then I took it off and I was like, it's a gift from my mom. And stuff like, just like that really quick thing right there, like my face even like, was like a proud, like this is a gift from my mom. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's here and stuff. And I know you couldn't really see it, but in a lot of scenes, I acted coach, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I acted coach Andrew, um, he told me, he said like, in certain scenes that have like a deep emotion to it, just like my hat was always on the side of me. So he said, just always like tap in, like feel around with it. Like know that your mother's connection, your only connection to your mother is right here. And that's what he told me. And I feel like a lot of times, I don't know if you can see it, but I was definitely like tapping the side of my hat and feeling around with it and stuff. That's really cool. Uh, Walker, next question for you. About a year ago, almost to the day, I chatted with Logan Lerman, your, your predecessor, did. right? I saw the interview, yeah. Amazing. And he said, I asked him for one piece of advice to give you. And he said, nothing to give you on an acting front. You're super talented. But he said, in terms of being on production, enjoy it. Take in every moment. It's very clear from everything we've seen that you did enjoy uh, eight months of shooting season one. But what was that one day on set where you really just looked around, saw Camp Half-Blood, saw wherever you were, and were like, man, I'm really doing the thing? I think it was uh, probably one of the days in the Ares fight. It was... I think it was like the second day in, and uh, at one point I'm I get like tossed in a puddle, and I was soaking wet, and I I I got down on the ground and I rolled through it once <laughs> to get wet, and um, I stood up and I looked around and we we're on a beach and uh, on the volume stage, Edge Copeland was standing in front of me. I had ripped out of my hand, and I was just thinking that like this is like what I was waiting for the whole production, you know. Yeah, it's real. It's happening. I can't wait to see that episode. Aryan, uh, with Grover, what I find so fascinating about that character is there's so much implied backstory. The Council mm -hmm. of Cloven Elders, Uncle Ferdinand at yeah. Auntie M's. How much of that are you filling in in your head and how much of that are you just kind of like, let's plant a seed here, maybe water in future seasons? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, again, like Leah mentioned, Andrew, our acting coach, mm -hmm. he did a huge deep dive of the books. He scoured it like we all did when we started. And Uncle Ferdinand was like a huge part of, of like for Grover in the books. And getting to bring that to life, like getting to give Grover his moment, because, you know, I've said this before, but it's easy to forget that Grover is like his own guy. He's not just a mediator. Mm -hmm. He's not just a protector. He's going through his own stuff. He has so much to prove after, you know, Thali and all that, that just getting to, I guess, get, like do him justice felt really good. Amazing. Uh, one final question before we get into some heads up, which I'm so stoked about. Rick Reardon had such a great presence on this show. He's like the Kevin Foggy of what we're building here, which yeah, is really that's cool. Exactly it. Right? That's and I, I love show. that he, he's essentially the puppet master. He's bringing all this together. I know you all probably had personal conversations with him. What's one piece of advice uh, that you'll never forget that Rick gave you? 
Doesn't even have to be acting. It could be life advice. <laughs> it could be anything. Uh, I Book guess recommendation. It wasn't. <laughs> it was uh, something that he did. Um, he's always like learning something new, you know, um, which I think is good for real life because um, we should always be learning something, you know. And uh, he's always learning something different. Like every year, I think. Uh, last year when we were filming, it was marine biology, I think. And uh, he was going like a whole college course on that. And uh, I think that was awesome, wow. you know? Yeah, yeah Aryan. Um, um, oh, no, go for so, it, please. You sure? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, for um, my mind just went completely blank. Um, oh yeah, no, no, I got it. Sorry, um, he told me one thing. He said, no matter what people will say about you, he said, Remember, I picked you. So, like, that was just mm -hmm. something right there. And I was like, ugly, ugly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. Just like, it's just like, and the way how he said it too was like, it, it was like crazy. He it was so humble. He was like, remember, if anybody says anything about you, just remember, I'm the one that picked you. And, you know, coming from the creator of all of this and stuff, him saying that, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in it now. <laughs> That's powerful. Aryan? Um, yeah, this isn't something really he said, but again, something he, 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 did, he did and he's always doing. Uh, Leah talked about this before, but he is insanely humble. He has such like an air of humility about him. He, I remember this like, I'll never stop thinking about this because it's such an insane sentence to say out loud. He walked across Mammoth Studio from the production office to like give to like hand deliver me a sign of set a set of signed books and then apologized for doing it because he was interrupting my school. And right, it was ridiculous. And just the fact that you know someone like Rick who has such like he's so like noble and like he's so wise about everything mm -hmm. like the fact that he can be that humble too and so kind it's 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 really inspiring and it's something i i hope to one day achieve <laughs>